I am really honored to, to be here. I'm a physiotherapist from, from Copenhagen and currently doing a PhD project here on acute injuries. So uh, I've been working with uh, groin injuries for quite a while, so it's uh, really exciting with, with this conference and, and all the people here. Uh, the first talk here is on uh, uh, EMG evaluation of hip adductor exercises. We know that uh, groin injuries are one of the most common injuries in, uh, in many sports, specifically uh, football and uh, ice hockey. In football, we also know that uh, the majority of exercise or the majority of uh, injuries are related to the adductor muscles. So as a physiotherapist, we, we get a lot of players in and we want to know what kind of exercises uh, should we use for these players and for these injuries. And uh, in research, we want to know that as well. Uh, so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of studies where exercise therapy is the main uh, exercise is the main uh, therapy of prevention in uh, groin injuries, and it, the effect varies, and the amount of exercises varies as well. Uh, but a, but a common thing with these are that the choice of exercises is not always based on evidence and and what we know. So we'd like to know more about why we choose the different exercises. Uh, and specifically for the adductors, we, we could look at intensity of the exercises as, as one of these uh, measures. So we wanted to do a muscle activity study. Uh, and this we did the uh, adductor longus mainly because we think that's one of the uh, uh, most commonly injured uh, muscles. But we also have measured the gluteus medius, the rectus abdominis, and the external obliques. I won't go much into that today. Uh, we chose eight, eight exercises, uh, six of them which have been used in research previously, and two which are uh, uh, proposed new uh, exercises to uh, include. Uh, we had a really good cohort of uh, 38 healthy elite soccer players, uh, Danish soccer players, and uh, they were all healthy, so no current hip or groin pain. We tested that with the adductor functional pain test, and we also used uh, the Hager score, as uh, Christian earlier mentioned. We used the uh, surface EMG during the exercises. They did a familiarization session and they did the exercises following where uh, you can see the placement of the different uh, surface electrodes here. Um, the eight different exercises that we used were uh, the isometric adduction with the ball between the ankles, uh, an exercise which is uh, used a lot uh, on the field. A similar exercise, isometric, with, where you just place the ball between the knees and, and flex the knees and the hip. We use the uh, elastic band exercise, where you move into uh, hip abduction and adduction in a slow movement, three seconds uh, eccentric and three seconds concentric. We use the sliding abduction and adduction exercise. We use the, uh, an adductor machine here. You can see a little bit more stretch legs than, uh, than the usual machines. We use a sideline hip adduction, which is also a very common uh, exercise used on, on the pitch when you don't have the, the equipment. Uh, then we wanted to introduce a, a new low load exercise, which is also uh, quite frequently uh, used, where you move the, the legs out to the side and, and slowly back in. And uh, we modified a, a, an exercise as well to, to uh, give a a uh, partner exercise which we thought would be of higher intensity and that you could use on the pitch. So we have one, uh, one uh, person, one of the players it could be, holding the, the player's leg and the other player moving up and down. So we, we thought that this would be the training side and we would be working on the core stability as well. Um, for the surface EMG, we used a 500 millisecond root mean square. Um, we normalize that into a maximal voluntary contraction. And you can see here there's an uh, isometric contraction, six seconds in the normalized measures here. And one of the uh, dynamic exercises with three, three contraction, where we have a three second uh, concentric or eccentric and three second uh, eccentric or concentric, depending on the exercise which comes first. So, for the results, we get a lot of results uh, for the different muscles. I'm just going to focus on the adductor longus and on the training leg. When we say uh, the training leg, we, we uh, define that as the dominant kicking leg, uh, the preferred kicking leg, and we use that as a training leg in, in all the exercises. And if you want to look more in the other results, you'd have to, uh, to find the article. 
So we can see that from all of these uh, exercises, we have a big variation in the, um, in the amount of muscle activity in the exercises. It ranges all the way down from 14% to, to 108%, which is actually higher than the, the, the maximal uh, voluntary contraction that we did, which is uh, due to the, the position. But what we can also see that in the top, we have uh, five high uh, intensity exercises, or so with a high muscle activity, all around 100 or above 100 of an MEC. We have the, uh, the isometric exercise and the other three. And as uh, Lars talked uh, about earlier, we, uh, we know there's a, a difference in the uh, uh, eccentric and isometric and concentric uh, contraction in terms of force and uh, EMG. So if we only look at the, uh, the exercises where we have an eccentric contraction as a component of the exercise, we have the Copenhagen adduction, we have the adductor machine, and we have the adductor, uh, hip adduction with an elastic band. So we also find in the other end of the spectrum, we have three lower intensity exercises, uh, where the highest is, is the isometric adduction uh, with the ball between the ankles, the side-lying adduction, only a 64% uh, uh, activation in the, in the training leg. Uh, and uh, the supine bilateral adduction even lower in the adductor longus. What we can also see is that there is a difference in exercises between the training leg and the non-trained leg. So if we use the isometric exercises, of course, you'll be pushing with both, both legs, so, so there would be no difference. But if you want to focus your rehabilitation on one leg, you can use either of these uh, three exercises where there is a a difference in, these, uh, in the muscle activation between the training leg and the non-training leg. You can see over here the, the trained leg with the, with the numbers around 100%. And with the, uh, the Copenhagen adduction and the elastic band exercise, the non-trained leg actually receives an, or uh, elicits a similar uh, muscle activation as you do with the training leg in the sideline adduction. Um, so we can conclude that when you're choosing your exercises for rehabilitation or prevention, that there's a significant difference between the exercises. So in terms of muscle activity, that's something you want to relate to uh, when you choose your exercises, and as well with the asymmetry in the muscle uh, activation. Another issue is when you choose your, uh, your exercises, you, you have to consider other factors as well. So we always want to know which is the best exercise to use in, uh, uh, for the individual uh, patient. So we can, also, uh, we can also look at some other factors. If we, uh, if we look at the elastic band hip adduction, you can adjust various things in the exercise. You can adjust the range of movement, uh, how far you get out into abduction. You can adjust the intensity, and you can adjust the velocity. We got to mention that in these, uh, these exercises where you can adjust the uh, in intensity, we chose a 10RM as a heavy uh, strength training um, intensity. Uh, and we did that on a familiarization day by uh, determining the length of, uh, of uh, the distance between the fixation point and, and the training leg, as well as the, uh, the uh, strength of the elastic bands. So, this would be uh, great for, uh, for rehabilitation where you can, uh, uh, you can, you can make an, a lot of adjustments depending on the level of the, uh, of the uh, player um, and how much pain he has in, in the different movements. And then we, uh, we also want something that you can do on the pitch, like we have the Nordic hamstring for the, uh, for the hamstring injuries. Uh, this could be similar for the uh, adductor injuries. Um, it's, it's a high intensity exercise that you can actually perform on the field. And uh, yeah, it has a high intensity, it's dynamic, and you have an eccentric component in it as well. So, yeah, thank you. I want to thank uh, uh, three of the guys here who are on the paper Christian Pierre and Lars uh, for their interesting talk today. And uh, I look forward to a, a great conference uh, at the further presentations. Yeah.